Hello everyone, welcome to my vlog. So it's Tuesday morning and of course it's the time for another vlog. So before I jump into my vlog today, I just wanna say huge thank you to Dylan Patrick for accepting my invitation to do the interview. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed it as much as I did. Dylan always shares so many amazing information. So um, I really appreciated his time and um, basically that he actually was even willing to share some of those secrets, some of those extremely valuable information, which helps not only me, but I think everyone who watched that got something out of this. So again, Dylan, I am extremely thankful and um, I, I, I don't even have words to describe how appreciated I am. So let's jump into our vlog today. So today I would like to discuss how we can actually can get better in headshot photography. So I'm receiving a lot of questions nowadays about how I create my images, um, what who inspires me, and then, you know, all those, um, I think, interesting information. So I actually had a chance to sit down yesterday and think a little bit more about it to actually just share with you guys my thoughts. So I came up with 10 different tips to help you to get better in headshot photography. So let's jump into it and let's discuss them step by step. So number one tip, and this is, I have to say, one of the most important uh, tips I can give you. And if you're gonna follow that tip, you definitely get better. So basically is practicing. So there is nothing better than practicing photography and actually doing shoots. You can get all the knowledge in the world, you, you can have all the information, you can know everything, but if you not put that into practice, you're not gonna get better. And photography, I think, is one of those skills that practice is mandatory. There is there's no way around it, there is no shortcuts, and you have to just keep shooting. And I think a lot of photographers forget about it. They wanna learn a lot of stuff, they wanna, um, find out all sorts of different informations, but they don't put that in practice and that's what the problem is. So if you have a chance to shoot, go for it. The more you shoot, you're gonna get better. Um, you know, every shoot always bring you something new to the table. And like, I don't wanna sound arrogant, um, but I have over 400 shoots under my belt. So I I went through a lot. So um. And you know, even today, I've learned something new. I actually have some kind of new concepts, which, you know, I'm trying to kind of put in practice and I'm trying to basically execute them because I know even if I fail, I will learn something. So, you know, whatever you do, um, if you are a headshot photographer, um, get everyone and whoever you can at the front of you, the camera, because every shoot will bring you closer to where you want to be. Okay, so what is number two? Number two actually tip is experiment. So, you know, the worst thing what can happen to us is, you know, you actually figure out something and then you kind of stick to it because that's when you're actually gonna hit that plateau where you're gonna be doing the same thing over and over and again. And even if you're gonna be good at, good at it, um, you know, you're not gonna progress with your work. So you have to make sure to experiment new things. And that's something which I extremely um, recommend to, you know, whenever you have a you know new shoot or you're doing something different, try to experiment with 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 some new new things even you know what little detail or little thing which can you know you want to try go for it don't kind of feel like oh you know what um i'm gonna actually just keep it safe and you know i'm gonna do the same thing you know i always always try to on every shoot do something different something add something new component to my headshots um, and it doesn't matter, it's a location, it's a pose, it's a lighting, you know, the, 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 there's no limits and there's basically, there, there's so many different things you can do to actually just add something to your craft. It's, it's unbelievable. So I highly recommend to basically um, try and experiment new things on every, each shoot what you are doing. Okay, so number three is 
of course, education. And that's also something important because you know what? Learning new things and educating yourself always kind of bring something new to the table. And I always encourage everyone to get new tutorials, watch YouTube videos, um, read blog posts, um, do whatever you can to get some new perspective, get new information, get new knowledge, which also helps you to get better. That's again, extremely important and make sure that you know you don't, I have to say, um, chip on it because I know you know a lot of people and I, I, I'm, I'm sure I'm repeating myself a million times, but I've noticed that a lot of people they rather spend a lot of money on equipment rather than education. And that's something which, in my opinion, should change in your future. And those guys who invest the money in education and learning, they're going to win. There's no question about it. So think about it and make sure you kind of change the direction um, a little bit. So number four. So number four is criticism. You know, make sure you actually give your images and get them kind of look after some other people who can kind of criticize them. And don't take things personally because I know a lot of people get offended if someone kind of says something bad about their work. Um, try to kind of look at those, you know, opinions and, you know, different feedbacks with kind of cold eye. You know, I know sometimes people say bullshit. Um, sometimes, you know, you can get really interesting criticism and, um, you know, try to live with this. I think this is the first step to get better that, you know, like you actually are being a little bit more open to criticism and don't take those things personally. Um, you know, I remember back in the days, I think like everybody else, when someone said something bad about my photos, like I was just losing my mind. But now, actually, you know, sometimes even those dumbest opinions or some of those like, you know, crazy cri critics, out there which kind of like rip my images apart um, you know I'm trying to kind of look what they see you know why they are saying those things you know where this opinion came from so try to kind of like be more open to those things and you know don't kind of try to argue that you're right and he's wrong or you know getting into some unnecessary um, conversation which leads to some argument um, just be more patient um, listen what people say and learn from it so that's something which um, it's, it's, it's extremely important in our work and um, even if you disagree with, with someone um, just let it go and just take it on your chest and um, listen and try to kind of hear what these people are saying. Um, number five. Um, the number five, in my opinion, is another really extremely important tip is doing free shoots. I know there's huge discussion about it um, and I have a lot of people against this and, and you know, I know we're running the business, we have to pay the bills, but um, I'll tell you what is the advantage of doing free shoots. You always can learn and you know, um, even if you screw up or you fail the shoot, um, there will be no hard feelings because you know, if you're open about it and you actually have a bunch of people, you work together and you do free shoot, you know, like nobody's gonna kind of keep you accountable. But if you get paid for the shoot, you, you always have to kind of make sure you're on the safe side and you're doing stuff properly. Um, so free shoot allows you pretty much to do things which you normally wouldn't do. So if you actually starting off or you actually been in this industry for a while, uh, don't be afraid if you see someone who is really interesting looking and kind of can, can, can bring you something to your portfolio or you want to experiment some new things, do it for free because it's not only a lot of fun, but also kind of opens the door to new possibilities. Um, and I highly recommend that. And you know what? I've been in the industry for so many years and trust me, I still do free shoots and I actually have them planned on the regular basis where I actually have a team of people and we collaborate and we work and we actually experiment and we do new things. So I highly recommend it. Do that. Don't listen to all those haters who say that, you know, free shoots, you know, you shouldn't do them because you should get paid for your work. This is, this is, I think the dumbest approach ever. And if someone tells you this, 
pretty much don't listen to them, just do your own thing. Um, so number six. So number six, I think is extremely important is to plan uh, your sessions. Um, I know that not too many people do that. And you know what? I have to tell you my experience when I started planning my shoots, they got better because you can actually predict a lot of things. You can visual a lot of things ahead and you can actually just predict and you can actually just work towards some goal and or towards some idea. So make sure the next headshot session you're gonna have, um, just pre-plan everything, um, you know, just work on each detail and what the outcome you would like to see and stuff like that. That's extremely important and you will see that helps you not only to get your shots better, but you will see that you can find some of those flukes, you know, in the process of planning those things and kind of fix them before you even get to the shoot. So this is another very, very um, important factor which I highly recommend it to do before every shoot. So the number seven, um, number seven, you know, I don't, I don't want to spend too much time on it because um, this is going to be really obvious, but I want to really point this out. Don't focus too much on the gear. I know there are some, you know, people out there who the main objective is focusing on the gear and that's what they, you know, trying to kind of focus on. And, you know, basically what happens is, you know, instead of being creative, you actually limit yourself because, you know, there's always something which is better. There's always some better lens. There's always some better camera. There's always some better speed light or strobe, you name it, you know, that's actually huge limitation to your potential and to to you being pretty much creative. So work with you, work with the equipment you have, and don't really, you know, don't kind of spend too much time on analyzing, you know, which equi which equipment could make your shots better because you can achieve those stuff anyways. So it doesn't matter, you know, how expensive your equipment is, you can you can also achieve those stuff with, with some cheaper version of, of lens or body or you name it. So, you know, but then what happens is like, you know, you depending on the gear, not on your mind and on your being uh, creative. Um, okay, so number eight. Um, number eight is collaborate with other people. This is something, you know extremely important and this is something which I also highly recommend work with makeup artists work with different uh, stylists work with um, hairstylists you, you, you can pick up like you know team with which can help you to achieve your goals and um, I, I know there's people who are kind of um, I have to say I'm not saying they're limiting themselves but they oh I don't want to work with anybody else this is my shoot this is like kind of my thing and I'm not gonna allow anybody from outside come in and do work with me um, you know this is also the worst thing ever because you not only kind of like limit yourself but also you just kind of closing yourself to some ideas and then you know I also found that if you work with other people, then you know, like your mind's getting kind of more open up to new things. And you know, maybe someone else will bring some interesting idea, or you know, they will adjust your concept or your photo shoot to the point that you know, you, you're gonna even be shocked that you got this amazing results. So don't kind of be close to other people, be open. And if someone, you know, in your opinion is, I don't know, valuable, for the stuff which you do and you want to bring them to the table and do something together, go for it. Okay, so number nine. Um, number nine is kind of obvious, um, you know, thing, but also I want to point it out. Uh, be inspired by other photographers. I always look up to some, you know, other people's work and um, looking for some new ideas and how I can somehow incorporate them in my work. Um, you know, we're living in an amazing world where there's so much out there where we can actually just look into and, and you know, um, the resources are limitless in my opinion. And I have a bunch of, you know, different photographers I'm following and, you know, looking what they do and kind of getting inspired by them. And um, sometimes I'm not going to lie, I'm going to try to incorporate their work and their ideas or some of their concept into my work. 
that's also kind of cool because you know you can try new things you know if you are sometimes you know out of ideas and you kind of feel stuck that's something which always helps because you can you know look up some of those things and try to uh, maybe not copy them but try to kind of like you know do something similar or do something which is gonna kind of you know get that feel of the image um, you know it's pretty cool and I have actually have a specific folder where I actually keep all those cool ideas and cool shots and um, whenever again as I said I'm getting kind of out of ideas and I feeling kind of like I'm, I'm empty and I need something which kind of inspires me I am actually building that list of different photographers and you know different shots of different images which you know can help my work get better okay and number 10 and this is something which I left to the end and something which you know if you got to this point thank you but this is gonna be the most important uh, I well tip and advice I can give you and if you take this to your heart you definitely will get better so number 10 is facing your weaknesses this is something which you know I always had I would say problems with uh, my ego was kind of taking over but as soon as I actually realized I need to actually look at my work look at what I do and be honest with myself and be honest with my weaknesses and that's this is something so liberating and something which actually opens so many new possibilities and open and like opens your mind to get better because i think the worst thing what can happen to to us is when you actually just way too much confident about your work and you think you're perfect and you do things the best and you know like nobody can beat you like you actually on the top of the world because this is the most um, distracting thing what can happen to to you to actually your creativeness and everything what you do and I remember I had those moments where for example like I was trying to find excuses to let's say not retouch the images I was always having those like oh you know my images are good enough they, didn't, they don't need to be retouched or I was like, well, why do I have to learn this? I can outsource those stuff. And um, I, then, of course, I didn't have money to pay other people. So, you know, my, my images were kind of, you know, the way they were. But as soon as I actually said to myself, you know what? You have to learn that. You suck at the retouching. You have to do something about it. You need to practice and you need to actually change your mind and you have to put time and work into this. And that's how I learned retouching. I dedicated time I knew I, I I'm bad at it and I need to you know improve and I need to actually learn that and I have to do everything what I what it's in my power to 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 learn that so you have to analyze your work you have to see what you are doing and you have to find those weaknesses and you know you have to be honest and really open to yourself and kind of say okay this is the stuff where I'm kind of good at it and this is the stuff which I need to improve and I need to work on and um, I have to say that that's something which is the, I would say the most important step in making progress in your photography uh, career and you know, with, with this, everything what you do. Um, because as I said, and I don't wanna wanna repeat myself, this is something which really change everything. So make sure uh, before you start doing all those other stuff, you really look into your work and look in yourself and you're gonna pretty much um, analyze and you know, okay, this is, this is what I am and this is what I wanna be. And then, you know, have those goals and work towards them. Okay, I'm not gonna repeat myself again because I know this is kind of, you know, I'm just talking over and over the same things, but I just wanna kind of make sure that um, you guys are gonna look at this whole thing from completely different perspective. Something which gives you some maybe new ideas or kind of new thoughts how to actually approach this um, entire headshot photography um, career and business or even if you're amateur, you know, maybe that kind of gives you a little bit of different angle to look at, you know, what you're doing. 